Hello, everybody. Uh, it's Trusty. I'm actually coming in a couple minutes early because I'm actually organized. And I really had to uh, come in and start saying hello to some of the people who signed on early. And more importantly, understand Peterson's uh, emoji uh, magic. So everyone is getting a hello with a series of emojis. So we've got um, we've got we've got uh, clover leaves and something that's not coming through. I got coffee and donuts, which I could live with that. Sam got pizza and beer, so <laughs> I'm not sure if they if they are assigned or if they are coming up random. Let's see what what is Mary Jo's turtles and is that a turtle turtles and starbursts. So now, now I'm like, I'm intrigued to see who uh, Peterson is saying hello to. So Jan got peaches and strawberries. So that looks like she's, she's uh, playing Vegas. Like that should be something in a slot machine. Uh, so there's my coffee and donuts. And let's see, the greeting from herself was butterflies and clovers. So we've got, uh, we've got, a, we've got a good mix. So if Peterson's saying hello to you, you can see what kind of, um, what kind of emojis you get. Oh wait, uh, Lisa also got coffee and donuts. Um, so I'm not special. Oh, actually, no, I take that back. Lisa and I are both special because we got coffees and donuts from Peterson. So, uh, but we got a bunch of people coming in uh, early. We got a little chatty at the beginning and I appreciate everyone coming in. There's a lot of stuff going on tonight. I think when I went to log in, there were already something like five or six live sales running on just who I follow. And I know some others are scheduled. So appreciate y'all hanging out with me tonight and uh, spending some time. I've got uh, Katie is going to be uh, running my voice of God again. So let me bring Katie in. There's Katie. Hi guys. <laughs> I adjust my volume so that we don't have a bounce feedback this time. I think we're gonna be good. Uh, and then of course, Nate is already running things in the chat, already causing trouble and being the fav our favorite neighborhood <laughs> liar. Uh, and I'm totally good with that. I, I, I uh, basically do the 10 point scorecards for lying. So I, I will totally rate that. Uh, we got Barb Lee's coming in the house, coming in from Illinois. Now they're Illinois, Debbie from Illinois, com uh, from Chicago coming in. Uh, we got Delbert coming in from Ohio. Vicky coming in. I don't remember where Vicky's coming in from. Do you remember where Vicky's coming in from? I don't. But uh, Vicky's a new name to me, but I'm so glad she's joining us in the chat tonight. Yep, so thanks so much for joining, Vicky. Got Kat coming in from Calypso Antiques. Irene coming back in. Of course, Nate from New Zealand. Uh, Lisa, that's the other uh, coffee and donuts uh, queen. So I will, uh, she and I will, I will be king. She'll be queen of coffee and donuts. Uh, Tony got all butterflies. Uh, let's see, what did Katie get? Oh no, but this is coming from Helen, but that's okay. So we've got oh, Starburst, Atomic Stars, Music Notes, Treble Cleft, and Atomic Stars again. Oh, that's a pretty. Oh, good I one. like that. That's that's fun. I love Peterson's little emoji. Yeah, Jamie's got the uh, cherries and rainbows. That's so here. Jamie because Jamie that is a good one. I like that one. Uh, so I said hi to Jan earlier, but I'll say hi again. Uh, Claudia is, whoops, we just jumped there. Claudia also coming in, bouncing between here and Nan and Daniel. Um, oh, he's having an IG sale. Oh, interesting. I was going to say, wait, he's had sales before, but no, I didn't realize this. He was doing his first uh, Instagram sale. Uh, so good luck to Daniel uh, with, um, Tacky is me is also his Instagram handle, isn't it? Yes, Tacky okay. is me. Yeah, yep. Tacky is me. I know that's his YouTube, so that's his Instagram as well. So he was doing an Instagram sale tonight. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, said hi to Vicky. Hello to Helen. Helen. Um, and let's see who else we had jumping in here toward the end. I think I skipped. I think I jumped. I missed. Something. I usually yeah, I missed Jamie. I was gonna say sorry, people were saying hi to Jamie, <laughs> but I couldn't find her. So Jamie's here from Mid Century Wasted. Hope you're doing well, Jamie. Um, now that Peterson you're... usually gives me uh, couches and little televisions or radios. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't found her greeting to you yet. Uh, so we've got Jen, Jeannie ads, Jenny ads that the, my, I think that's a new name to me. So uh, welcome. If you are new to the chat, well, we got our first uh, Canadian in the house. We've got Tia Fain coming in. So thanks Thank so much Fain. for joining Tia Fain. Hey guys. Michigan is represented by four Sandy's lilacs. Uh, let's see. So we've got, what did, what did, uh, Tia Fane get? Some cherries and something. I can't tell what that other I one think is. They're little squirrels. Okay. Or yeah. So yeah, that one, that one having a harder time. Uh, Chad got turtles and peaches. 
<laughs> yep. Turn those okay. Pieces. Excellent. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't say hi to Chad. So we got a turp in the house. I saw Dawn was in here uh, from just one more docs. And I don't know if there is a doxy uh, emoji. We need to create one. You know, there's not, there's just a dog and there needs to be different dog breeds. And I've been saying this for a while too. I'm in a petition to get a record. There's a CD, but there's no vinyl. We need vinyl. Oh, interesting. I, I think there would be. Uh, Dana's in the house. Oh, we got hey, Scott Dana. coming in from the old curiosity shop. Hey, Scott. Uh, multitasking while he's wiring lamps. He's just showing off. Oh, cool. He's wiring cool. lamps. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Angela coming in from Angela, uh, from Dear Angela's Vintage. That's her new name. Uh, still putting out the um, calendar on Instagram um, every weekend. So if you are trying to keep track of all the sales, make sure you follow. Uh, is I, Did she change her Instagram name? Is she now also Dear Angela's Vintage on Instagram or she's still A. Marksberry? She's still A. Marksberry, but she's got the little Dear Angela's Vintage logo to help kind of tie everything. Okay. So if you follow A. Marksberry, uh, you will find the calendar each week. Lemmy Lemon has come back. Loving that name. Pat Simpson's come back. I love that name. There's a soda, Lemmy Lemon. Oh, okay. Didn't know where that came from. Got Lynn representing Jersey. So we've got Scott's got some, got some uh, company. Uh, Scott from Old Curiosity Shops from Jersey. He lives in Philly, but he is from Jersey, as he points out on a regular basis. Uh, Kitchy Corner is in the house. And let's see, I missed, uh, I said hi to Chad, said hi to Dawn. Karen Radford, I don't think I said hi to Karen. So I always feel bad when it starts jumping that I'm going to miss somebody. So, and I, I know I'm missing Danny somebody. From oh, old, I see Danny, the niche lady, is joining us. And Excellent. Hey, Danny, how you doing? Thanks for joining in. Brian from the Chicagoland area is coming in with, um, evidently he's in disguise. So he's getting, he's giving himself his own emoji with the little, uh, little, looks like it's got the big nose and, and mustache. Um, oh, Jeannie's in the house. Hope you're doing well, Jeannie. Hey, Jeannie. And of course, Peterson gave Danny an entire row of turtles. Yes, Danny so, loves her turtles. Absolutely. <laughs> entirely appropriate. Um, I'm and thinking I, I had a turtle, know. but I don't think I'm going to have it tonight. I think I had something, but it didn't come into the sale. No turtles tonight. Uh, Celeste from San Antonio, Texas is joining us back again. So appreciate you coming back in, Celeste. Judy is here. And let's see. I've missed all of these people. Uh, so there's Chad. Oh, Tammy Renee Walker is coming in from Mississippi. Trisha hey, coming in from the West Coast. Book Bewitched coming in from the West hey, Coast. Book. Oh, let's see. So Dawn Ha, <laughs> So John making her own emoji combo, the dog with the hot dog. So we've got the wiener. I dog. love that, Dawn. So, so technically the dog, the hot dog should be first because then it would be red wiener dog. So you've got the little wiener and then you got the dog. Yeah. Um, so yes. So I'm glad uh, Dawn has lots of uh, experience trying to come up with people representing dachshunds. So she came up with <laughs> So that is awesome. So thanks everyone for joining. Most of the names I recognize got Larry Riley's back in. Uh, Sue Raspberry's back. I see um, Mickey thrifting in the holler. Thr uh, which uh, did I see? Did I miss thrifting in the holler? She came in. Or, I did earlier. I know the chat jumps. It's hard. Yeah. So I apologize. So the Mickey, I apologize. I missed you. Kitchy Cat, I missed. Um, so most of the names I'm seeing. Oh, and Pat says she's a Jersey Shore girl too. Um, so, so if I missed you, I do apologize. It does jump, so it's hard to keep track of everything. Most of the names I seem to recognize, oh, there's Thrifting in the Holler, hello. Um, if you are new, just a really quick summary. Uh, Patricia is uh, in the house as well. If you are new to the channel, the biggest thing to know about my live sales compared to others, I just don't do offer ups, I don't do auctions. So when I show you an item, I will tell you the price, that is the price you will pay. Uh, what you then need to do is I'll give you the number. You need to be you need to type that into the live chat, not into the comments. So if you're not seeing these little notes that I'm popping up, if you're not seeing those, you're in the wrong place. And if you're on a mobile device, you need to be using the YouTube app. So if you're new with people and just ask, I've got several moderators in the in the house. They will help you out. Um, but it's the first person that Nate sees in the chat giving the number that I announce. Uh, that is the person who claims it. If you've never purchased from me, you just need to uh, send me a uh, an email to the email address on my screen. 
So I know where you are because prices do not include shipping. So I need to calculate your shipping. I'll combine, if you buy more than one item, I'll combine it and give you the best shipping uh, rate I can. Uh, once you pay the invoice, I will ship you the item. Very simple. And uh, we're gonna get try and get things started and keep things on track tonight because I know there are a lot of other things going on. So as people are jumping around between sales, uh, one of the things I've started doing is for all the early birds that come on right in the beginning, I've offered my mystery boxes. And if you're gonna get one of my mystery boxes, at least for the time, at least for the foreseen, foreseeable future, you will get one of my, well, not my, you will get a, a maxi pad that I had picked up. And that is uh, gonna be included in all the, myst in the mystery boxes. I have multiple mystery boxes tonight. This will be the first one. Uh, what I do a little bit differently on the mystery boxes to make it fun for people that feel that their internet isn't fast. I don't, I want people to hang out. You're all honorary huckster hecklers. So take that however you want to choose to use it. And, you know, hopefully if you want something, you get it. But if you don't, Hey, we're here to have fun. Don't get upset. Don't start yelling at other people. Um, I'm not selling the Mona Lisa. I'm selling maxi pads. So the mystery box is works a little bit differently because they are super popular. I've changed it around. So instead of telling you the number, I make you guess the number. So what we're gonna do in this case, and I will have multiples of these throughout the evening, uh, but what we're gonna do in this case is I will tell you the range that the max, that, that the Maxi Lisa, I will tell you the range <laughs> that the mystery box uh, falls into, and you can guess your number. And you can guess as many times as you want. Just put, hit enter, put a number, hit enter, put another number, hit enter. You can do it in any way. People have been successful just doing like a, a run. You never know what number it's gonna be, uh, but I will tell you the range, so we're not running forever. Uh, so this one is the first mystery box. I will uh, custom pack it to where, you're sh where I'm shipping. So just assume shipping costs are gonna be somewhere around nine to 10 bucks, uh, just depending where you're at. And this number of this mystery box falls between 30 and 40. So between 30 and 40, we'll get uh, this mystery box. And yes, that'll, that'll be the new merch. I'm not selling the Mona Lisa, I'm selling the Maxi Pads. <laughs> I think that is so clever. <laughs> oh, Fabric Finds has joined us. Hey, Laura hey, and Laura. Mary Beth. Thanks hey, so Mary much. Beth. For, I know you guys are busy. Thanks so much for uh, signing on. The other Katie is here, Berkeley girl coming in from California. Hey, Katie B. Let's see. So I've, the numbers have already flown past. Uh, and I already see it, but I can't be bribed. <laughs> so I got to wait for Nate. To I haven't seen it yet. I must have jumped past it. Let's see. Do you see it yet, Patrick? No, it keeps jumping. Oh, there I see. Okay, I see one. Okay, I see two. Okay, yeah. I, I, do, I see now at least three people that had it. Yep, I see that too. Now I'm waiting for Nate. Oh, there's a fourth person. That was a lot Before. higher. You got to make it all the way to New Zealand with your internet, folks. <laughs> and yes, I'm seeing the same thing, Nate, is the mystery box number 38 goes to Celeste in Texas. Congratulations. Right, because the number is 38. So congratulations, Celeste, for picking up the first mystery box of the evening so you get your own maxi pad plus some other good stuff texas is kind of like middle of the road it's about kind of halfway through the the way the u.s postal service does zones so it's it seems more expensive than it should be but uh, you'll you'll get a good uh, you'll you'll be able to get a good box all right so uh, moving on to the traditional part of the sale uh so the next item i've got coming in let me jump down to the end everyone's saying congrats to celeste and yep we're all 38 jamie there you go. Actually, you you probably are, uh, <laughs> but I'll just say I'm 38. Uh, when I dye my beard, people might believe me. So, um, and yes, yeah. In general, it's it depends on how how uh, heavy the box ends up being. So I'll I'll do a decent sized box and just make sure I never go over 10 bucks um, and still give uh, the value of the box will end up being somewhere around 25 to 30 bucks. And then, so you're paying 15 plus the shipping you're getting, you know, a value and a shout out to fat bird finds. They did not invent the concept of the mystery box, but they definitely invented the concept of including mystery boxes in live sales. And so I give them a huge shout out and I love the fact that they keep the middle low price, that $15 price point. So they're fun. So I hope, and I had a lot of people and some of the people who are trying to get one have gotten multiples and uh, they seem to enjoy them. So I hope you guys are liking my mystery boxes. Uh, so uh, next item is not a box, it's a canister. 
So this one is a vintage, uh, just a candy tin, metal candy tin. It is not, uh, from what I can find, it's not labeled in any way. It didn't have, um, it didn't appear to be printed with like the, the nutrition uh, values of whatever was inside. So, and I do think it's a little bit older. It has a little bit of oxidation right around the rim. So I do think it's showing some age and you can see some oxidation on the inside as well. It's still pretty good condition, um, but I do believe that this is a little bit older. Uh, I did not find anything on here that said who the maker was. Katie's talked about in some of her uh, videos that sometimes it's like right around the top. So where the lid goes on, I don't see it and I don't see it by the, t the seam and I don't see it on the bottom. So just a generic, um, but it's kind of a cute uh, red and white stripe. The lid does go on, I promise. There we go. Uh, red and white stripe, it is decorated on all sides. So you've got the front and the back have the candy, one cent with all the little tiny candies uh, decorating around the bottom. So just a cute little tin, lightweight, shouldn't be uh, much to ship it. That's only five bucks. So $5 for the little candy tin, $5 by giving me number 49. $5, number 49 for the little candy tin. That is such a fun tin. Very circusy to me. And yes, it does. It kind of looks like a circus backdrop uh, or just like an, one of those like old fashioned candy shops, you know, type thing or something yeah. on the street of Disney World. Sort of um, like the candy shop in Stars Hollow. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing, but I'm like, I don't think everyone's going to get a Gilmore Girls reference. So, but I love my Taylor's old fashioned sales or soda shop. This would absolutely be on his shelf. <laughs> yes, it would be. And I see Celeste and Taxes. You've got the fast internet Ooh. tonight. Congratulations on number 49. All right. She's, she's put the challenge. Gauntlets drop. She's got the fast internet. Uh, but I forgot before I go too much further, but was just reminded that uh, I do not do auctions on my live sales. Um, I think they're boring. Uh, so, But I do do auctions on my eBay channel because I think that's what eBay is for. So this happens to be the item right now that is up for auction currently. It is an original pen and ink drawing of Dracula with his victim and the castle in the background. But if you missed this when it was posted last week, what's unique about it is it's a school project, a college level uh, course. And because she was being graded on this, what she did was there's this little pocket on the back. And in the pocket is the artwork she used to create the art. So you've got her victim came from a 1995 L magazine ad. And then these were a different size. So this came from a different magazine, but you had a picture of Boris Karloff in Dracula, or no, Bella Lugosi in uh, Dracula as well as the castle in the background. So all three of those, it's kind of like a little archive of the original uh, design she used to create the original pen and ink uh, drawing. And it's just very well done. It's very cool. It is mounted on the board. It itself is not uh, matted. So you might want to have a, a mat, but it is attached to the backboard. And it is, it's just a great little piece. Um, the family was here in the Chicago area. So I'm assuming Tracy Haynes is here from the Chicago area, but it was back in spring of 95 that she took this course and I did not find any reference to her name. So that is available. It will end, uh, the auction will end tonight uh, in 44 minutes. minutes. And it did have some activity re earlier today. Uh, so uh, Nate just dropped the link into it. Um, and I'll give you, did he give the update of where it was priced right now? Uh, I've typed that in the chat. We are currently at $17 and 50 cents with 43 minutes and 19 seconds. There left. you go. So that is, that is live until the top of this coming hour. And then this will go live in the next hour. So I will show this again, but if you watched, I was on Katie's channel last night as a show and tell showing some cake toppers. That was one of the items that I showed thanks to uh, Paula, uh, who I don't think is in the chat tonight, but she sent me information. She helped me find it. So I found out what it was. It is a Wilton piece. It's from the sixties. And uh, I decided to put that up as my auction item tonight. So that will start when the other item ends. So I will show that again in a little bit. Amazing items. 
Yes, and I and if you go back, if you don't subscribe to Katie. Uh, again, Katie is vintage and vinyl. If you don't already subscribe to her, make sure you're following her channel. She does some great content and she, I do some deep dives. She does some show and tells there's kind of a little bit of overlap there. So, um, she had me on her channel. I've had her on my channel and last night happened to be, it was not my personal collection. It just happened to be a collection of cake toppers that I picked up to resell. And that Apollo, uh, space program item is one of them that is now going to be sold. All right. If you are familiar and have come and are a regular attendee to my channel, you will know you will find coasters on my channel. So this not necessarily starting with them. It's just they're right here. <laughs> so I'm going to do these next. These are probably one of my favorite set of coasters that I've picked up in some time because it's like the designer back in the 40s or probably the 50s was I like was related. You know, so we have a set of four coasters. They're only marked Japan on the back. There's no manufacturer's mark, but we have save the furniture. <laughs> so we have a coaster that right out of the gate, just point, point blank says, use the freaking coaster and save the furniture. So I absolutely love this. Um, this one for the simple minded that need to have literally have it spelled out for you. Use me under tumblers. <laughs> So we have coasters that are trying to talk to the stupid and say, use me. It's like subliminal messaging. Use me under, under tumblers. This one is, I'm thrilled that Scott is here. I don't know if he's still here because this is a story. If you watch my video with Scott, I, tr I visited Scott. He did not have coasters and he told me to use his, you know, 150 year old Persian rug um, to put my drink on. This is for you, Scott. Not on the rug. There's a coaster specifically designed for Scott. It's even in the Scott Old Curiosity Shop green. Not on the rug. So we've got a third coaster. And then we've got a fourth coaster that seems to be which one of these is not like the other. Because this one is, it is the exact same shape. It's the same style. It has the same ribbon and everything on it. It's got the same house in the middle. But this one says, don't burn up the house. <laughs> so I think we've drifted into a related ashtray. <laughs> so it doesn't have anything to hold the cigarettes though. I mean, it's literally the exact same mold that was used to make the regular coasters used to make this one that says don't burn up the house. So unless, uh, you know, beverages used to do something that I don't know about when you didn't use a coaster, um, I'm assuming this must have also been just as a set. Could have been a coaster because it's the same size, but was also geared for use as an ashtray. So they're all in great condition. Um, no, no chips, no cracks. They're, they're definitely vintage. There's a little bit of crazing running through them, a little bit of wear on the bottoms, but they're all just charming and they just all have it and they have a different house on each of them. So it just makes a very cute set. And yes, Sam, they are sassy. They are talking your new apartment <laughs> needs these. So we've got a set of coasters, um, the home home uh, design coasters and the whole set's only 10 bucks. So $10 for the vintage Japan made coasters, 10 bucks by giving me number 32. You gotta have coasters. I just cat sat for my brother and he has one coaster in his whole apartment and I just couldn't live with that. So I brought him more. <laughs> use me under tumblers like you know what happens when somebody doesn't like if you have these in your house i think you're like serious like me use your freaking coaster the coasters are even talking to you use the coasters and yes the other katie berkeley girl gets number 32 congratulations those are fantastic thank you katie uh the other katie for picking those up i'm glad i'm sure you're going to give them a good home and I, I like i said those are probably one of my favorite designs that i've picked up just because they are kind of quirky um and you know not everyone's like super into coasters but when you've got designs like that how could you not how could you not put coasters you got a lot of them. um i mentioned the cake topper that will be coming up, uh, that'll be part of the auction, but I also had a bunch of cake toppers and I said I was gonna start selling them in this sale. Now, if you were really paying attention last night <laughs> during Katie's sale, every time I moved to pick something up, you would have seen this behind my head popping up. Well, you saw it, I didn't. <laughs> I did the entire show with this sitting behind me and I forgot to show it. 
So when I was cleaning up, I suddenly saw this little lone piece was sitting all by itself. And it was just this little piece of plastic that you would have seen every time I moved my head. So now mystery is solved. This is what I was showing. This one is a Wilton set. It says Wilton right on there. Wilton, uh, and this is Wilton Woodridge. So it, it dates past uh, about 1980. They moved to Woodridge in around 1980. There was a reference in 2006, you know, 2018, I think it was, that they'd been in their that location for almost for almost 40 years, and they were moving again. So I couldn't find the exact date, but if you see it says Woodridge, it posts it past the 80s. But you've got the colorful uh, clowns. Sorry, avert your eyes to certain people. <laughs> you've got the clowns. They are looking up. They are still in their original packaging, so I apologize that it's harder to see them. But if you notice, they're standing kind of like karyotids, uh, karyotids, uh, that they are holding up the cake, the cake platform. So this, there's two of these little platforms in there. So this one would have gone onto the lower cake, and then there are four pedestals that would fit into the little holes in both the, the hands and the feet of the clowns. So they would be held into place so they wouldn't wiggle. And then you'd put the other platform on top also with the little prongs and it would hold it together. So you would basically have a two tiered cake with these clowns in the middle. So you can horrify all of the children at the birthday <laughs> party. Um, so this is just, it's a, it, the set is still complete it's still in its original packaging, but it has lost its hang tag. Uh, but even the clowns themselves are still wrapped, but you can see the way they're designed. You'd have that where they've got the flat top. That's where the, uh, platform would be. So it's really kind of cool, very functional. You know, if you are trying to recreate or, you know, this is one of those cases because the hang tag's gone, it's not that big of a deal. I feel if you take it out of its original packaging, technically it's new old stock, but incomplete. These would just look cool in a display because you could put these on a shelving unit and then put other freaky ass clown stuff sitting on top of it and horrify all your guests. You don't have to decorate a cake. You can horrify children without a cake. So this is very colorful. Again, probably 80s, maybe 90s. I'm not sure like when this specific design was done, um, but it is the set of clowns supporting, uh, basically it's a tier support. New old stock, perfect condition, and it's 15 bucks. $15 for the Wilton pair of clowns and platforms. 15 bucks, number 86. Um, and I'm in the no clown club, but I have to say those would be pretty awesome in a display, especially with them stacked up like that. Coming at you. No. <laughs> Here I am. So Look at my big lips. Sleep. <laughs> so it's one of those cases that if you if you do, many people collect clowns, do not find them freaky at all. It would make for kind of a unique way to display other clown pieces. Because what I like about them is with those little prong pieces, it's going to be pretty stable. So you could put stuff on top of it or set it up. And uh, it's just kind of a cool little set. And Lemmy Lemon is getting those little clowns. Congratulations, Lemmy. Thank you, Lemmy Lemon, for picking those up. And the other benefit to all of these, I, I only have a couple more cake toppers, but they're all relatively lightweight. So they're all pretty inexpensive to ship. Probably won't do them in a padded mailer because I, I don't want them to get cracked. So they'll probably still have to go in a box, but I still think it's probably going to be under a pound. So, uh, and thank you, Irene, for giving everyone um, a thumbs up. And Geofane, this may have been completely random uh, that you pulled that out. Sending the Clowns is one of the worst songs ever written for musical theater. You know, just feel like that's to be said. So if you already hate clowns, you might as well hate the song too. It was written in, literally, it was written in like four hours. And in my opinion, it proves it. But uh, yeah, Sending the Clowns. So, oh, and let me said she's got a whole shelf full of circus stuff. Well, now you can like oh, cool, let me. double double up. You can do double tier. Ah, oh, Melody joined us. We hey, got Melody. Pennsylvania is represented. And there we go, Mr. L. Page. Let's we can all prove our musical theater knowledge and just put in the horrible lyrics of "Sending the Clowns." So say, <laughs> don't bother. Do they're here. Patrick, it's not a great song. <laughs> they're right here. <laughs> they're right here, and they're going to Lemmy Lemon. So, all right, next item. This is again one of the, I have I, I have to say I've I enjoyed a lot of the things that I pulled for my sale today. These I've seen a version of these before, but I had not seen this specific set. 
They are salt and pepper shakers. And if you saw my Instagram channel, you would have seen these. So they are, you know, kind of in reminiscent of the cake toppers that we were talking about on Katie's channel, what I've been showing here. But they're not cake toppers because they are salt and pepper shakers. So you've got the, the holes in their head. But if you look at the bottom, they say before, because when you then flip them around, you now <laughs> have the time marches on side and the woman is pregnant and the man has balded and is, has a beer gut. But he picked up a dog. He didn't have a dog in the first one. Now he's got a dog. So, you know, not all is bad when time marches on. But we have his his vision is gone. So now he's wearing the little uh, um, the little glasses on his nose. Uh, the woman evidently has gone Russian because she's wearing a little babushka around her neck, around her head. Um, but and then I also find that on the back side, it actually indicates that this one is pepper because you got a little P on his pants. And then you've got S for salt. So they decided to tell you it does have the holes. Um, the pepper does have uh, more holes than the salt, which is normally the common, but I found others. Uh, but it is simply a before and after. So, you know, for those of you who you know might be divorced like me, perfect wedding gift for the future bride and groom. Just say, yep, this is what you're doing. And that's what you're going to turn into. Except misery now. So <laughs> we got the before and after bride and groom with the uh, after effects. And the pair is, and they're in good condition. They're marked. Scott probably knows, but it will, it's a little test. I couldn't find the... Uh, Maker's Mark. I don't know, Katie, if you recognize it. It does say in very tiny print, it does say made in Japan underneath it. But I couldn't figure out if that was supposed to be something over a W. I could not, and I couldn't Google Lens it. I couldn't find who the maker was. But I, I don't recognize that, but it's made in Japan, so it's definitely. Yeah, and it's, and it's the weight and the style of a made in Japan. So I don't think it really matters who made them, but, you know, just, just sharing that. Um, no, no bitterness whatsoever, Melody. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, so we've got, you know, even a better, even a better pair. So <laughs> we've got the salt and pepper shakers as a set made in Japan, only 10 bucks for the pair. So $10 for the two, uh, the before and after bride and groom salt and pepper shakers, 10 bucks by giving me number 35, 10 bucks, number 35. I could make a really rude comment, but I won't, but. Let's say there's also something else that grew on this bride beyond her stomach. So, you know, make your own judgment. So 35, 10 bucks for the pair of salt and pepper shakers. And that is such a fun little set there. And I see Celeste with the fast internet and tech. Oh, she is just raking things in today. Excellent. And so we've got Celeste is now adding to the box. And, she, and again, those are lightweight, so they shouldn't add all that much. Um, but yep, number 35 goes to Celeste. All right. I think Jamie, if Jamie is still in the house, I do not have mid-century modern very often, but I have it today. So we've got some mid-century modern uh, from Bavaria. It is a teardrop shaped dish with one of the coolest handles. It is a brass uh, handle that the that just kind of like wraps around the shape of this dish. And then you can see the handle itself is wrapped. So you've got, um, I actually don't know what it's wrapped with. It feels kind of plasticky, very technical term. Um, but I honestly don't know. It's done very well because it's been tucked in so there's no loose end. Like it's it's still in really, really good condition. So I don't know if people that are familiar with this, I'm assuming it's just some sort of a plastic, but it might be something else. And, uh, and I agree, Nettie, it is absolutely a gorgeous shape. It's got a gorgeous design on it, kind of like the atomic flowers with the little grasses on it. It is a Johann Saltman uh, Volenstrasse stamp. So I did a little bit of digging because I love my European porcelain. And so this stamp was introduced in 1949. Um, there were different comments from a couple of the sites that I looked at. Some of them said it was ended in 1955. Some said it was ended in 1960. So I'm not sure exactly when this was, but based on that shape and based on that design, it's definitely mid-century modern. So 
1949 was when the stamp came out is probably a 50s piece possibly early 60s but it seemed like the stamp ended in 1960 so anyway it's a super cool piece it is in fantastic condition it's got a gold trim all the way around it and, and now he's asking what the metal loop is for the metal i think it's just it's just part of the handle so i think it literally is just part of the handle i don't you maybe you could have held a spoon in there but it wouldn't now it's like some assembly required so hold on let me see if I can get this back together nope that's not it Excuse me. And what is the dish used for, do you think, Patrick? I had never considered that this, the hoop would be for anything, but now that I'm looking at it, you could hang a spoon in here and then like twist it out, but it, it might be difficult. I think it's a sauce bowl or a relish, relish dish. I could not find this shape on replacements uh, under this brand. And like I tried teardrop, I tried oval. To me, it's teardrop because it's much bigger at the top than yeah, it is at the bottom. I agree. But I couldn't think of any other term to use to like describe it. Um, so I never came across this particular shape under this, the Seltzman brand, but I don't think it, that makes it that rare. I just think it puts it into that very specific period and they may not have made it for very long. Um, so I didn't find a lot of examples on something like this for pricing, but it is European hard paste porcelain. It's extremely high quality. It's an extremely good condition. And what appears to be the moneymaker on this is actually the handle because you, the dishes, even in other designs and shapes, the dishes seem to be not common, but they were around. The handles were not. Um, so this one, you're getting the entire piece. Uh, so let's see. So it's Jamie, the expert, is saying random mid-century modern serving piece like most of them. Uh, they had a dish for everything. Yeah, they were like, they were trying to be the Victorians all over again, but just with cooler stuff. So and I think you could put lemons in that for a little tea service if you wanted. That's to. true. I mean, it's, it's, it, it is curved. So it is a bowl as opposed to like a nappy where sometimes yeah. the lemons are flat. Um, so I mean, it could be a sauce. It could be for like small, it could be a candy dish. Um, and like I said, I just saw this even with the loop. I just saw it as a candle. So like you could carry it into the living room and maybe has it have it for something for snacks, you know, with your cocktail party. But whatever you do with it, I think it's pretty cool. And it's only 18 bucks. So $18 for the mid-century modern tear shaped, uh, teardrop shaped dish with holder, 18 bucks by giving me number 64. $18, 64 for the Johann Saltzman Bavaria dish. And you can put whatever you want in it. Absolutely. <laughs> get that dish. I think that is such a cool shape. And I'm going to wait for Nate here, but I know who I see first on my end. And let's see. Nate said that he lost some connection. Uh -oh. so hopefully he's coming back in. And yes, Nate sees the same thing I do. Congratulations, Chad. Retro days. You're getting that wonderful little mid-century piece. Yes. Congratulations, Chad. That is heading to Maryland. Thank you for picking that up. All right. So... I try and pick up when I can. I try and pick up things to honor the people that I'm working with or that are helping me and things like that. And I do have something coming up that's very Katie, but I don't always get a lot of things that I can do to honor Nate. So I missed him by, you know, a country or two, but I found a boomerang. <laughs> so I, maybe they use boomerangs in New Zealand too. What do you say, Nate? You got, you got uh, New Zealand boomerangs, but you've got this cool little, uh, uh, kangaroo design with the little uh, turquoise boomerangs on the side. I do not believe this is particularly old. Uh, it says it's stamped by, uh, made by Lauren Hawes, Queensland, with the outline of the country of Australia. And then it's, it looks like it was sold by Stone's Throw Boomerang. So that's who made it. That is stamped into the actual boomerang itself. And then you've got the foil label that says Stone's Throw Boomerangs P.O. Box with an area code. So again, I don't know how old this necessarily is. And this sticker makes it look, I think this is, makes it at least 90s, if not newer. We make it great in the Sunshine State. And the Sunshine State is not Florida, it is Queensland. Okay. So you know, we're in a different continent. <laughs> so the Queensland State, taking that away from Katie's homeland or hometown, we're not in Florida anymore. We are the Sunshine State of Queensland, Australia. So kind of cool. Um, I 
never thrown a boomerang in my life and I live in a townhome development. So I really don't think they'd appreciate me trying. Um, so I don't know if it works. I don't know how boomerangs work or if it's just supposed to look cool, but the fact that there's somebody, an artist that has designed it, I'm thinking these are supposed to be, you know, you know what you're doing. You could actually have your own Aussie boomerang. Nate is saying they do not do them in New Zealand, but I'm sure there are some people in New Zealand that are from Australia that like to, you know, throw boomerangs at the sheep. So we've got <laughs> the little kangaroo boomerang from Lauren Hawes in Queensland. And it's only 12 bucks, $12 for the boomerang, 12 bucks by giving me number 28. $12.28. It's, very, it's like, like mid-century modern. It's like the, the boomerang shape. It really is. And this is something I think would look amazing in a gallery wall because you could do so much with it. It really adds that 3D element. And, and you can you hang it at the angle. You could, you could frame it over other pieces. I mean, it even looks good against the, something dark. So it is. It's just something a little bit different and something fun. So, okay, Nate's giving us fun facts. Yes. I was going to say, Nate's got something cool here. The ring is thrown over the kangaroo. It makes a whirring, it makes the whirring noise driving the kangaroo towards the hunter. Okay, I didn't need to know about the part about dispatching the animal. I don't want to think anyone is dispatching a kangaroo. How, are you freaking evil? Um, but the idea that this is actually, I, I wouldn't even think this would make noise. Like that's actually, so I find that actually kind that of That is wild. Very yeah. cool, Nate. So and, that, uh, that boom, boomerang is going to Barb Lee, number 28. All right. So it's going from Queensland to Illinois to Illinois, because Barb is here in Illinois. So I will get that to Barb. All right. Well, since I show the Nate item, I will go ahead and show the Katie item. So this is always, anytime I'm going to have a, uh, anytime I'm going to have a um, typewriter ribbon tin, rest assured, Katie has already passed judgment on it. And uh, this happens to be one she already has. So this is a Columbia, Columbia brand Twintex carbon. It has the twins on the front and you can see on the twins, one has a skirt or apron that says clean and the other one says good. I'm not sure which twin I would want to be or be with, but regardless, we've got a clean and we've got a good. And then on the back, it's all the details. So and then, so this is the front. So this is the base of it. This is the front. And Katie did my very first deep dive and she talked about a ribbon tins. And she talked about the fact that people caught on to the idea that after people use the ribbon out of them, they had these cool tins. So they start saying so some cases, some of the companies started making them decorative so that you could still put it out on your desk without it necessarily advertising the company, but the advertisement's still on the back. So Columbia Carbon Company, Dayton, Ohio, with locations in Los Angeles and San Francisco. And what she mentioned about this one, I picked it up because I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, did not have, yeah, I think I looked for this one. It did not have a manufacturer name on the tin itself. But it turns out that this is fairly collectible. That this it is, is a it's a hard one to find. And I think Katie paid way more than I'm about to charge for mine. <laughs> so she's going to get upset. But um, it is one that I found listed on eBay, not like prolifically, but there were several of them. And they, they did have a fairly traditional um, price. But I got mine at a good price. So I'm making sure I'm going to pass it off to a good price. And it's in great condition. So, so for all of you who get upset because all of my ribbon tins go to Katie first, here's a, here's a ribbon tin that you actually have a chance to get your hands on. And it's a good one. And it is 16 bucks. So $16 for the Columbia Twin Tex, uh, good and clean twins, 16 bucks by giving me number 25, $16.25. And that is an amazing price, folks, and a great ribbon tin. You don't see every day. I love the colors on that one. Those are the Columbia Twins, and uh, just an awesome, awesome tin. There is one in orange, but this is the blue one, and you don't see the blue one that often. So I think that was a cool find, Patrick. No, I didn't see the one. I, I think all the ones that I found were had the blue. I don't think I noticed the orange one. And I see Nettie getting number 25. Congratulations, Nettie. Awesome. Congratulations, Nettie. Thank you for picking that up. And don't forget, folks, the Dracula pen and ink has 18 minutes left. We are up to 1750. So definitely go check that out on eBay. Absolutely. All right. Next item that I picked up, um, admittedly, when I picked it up, 
I probably overpaid for it, but I thought it was so cool that I had to have it. And then I did a little bit of digging. So first I'll show you what it is. So it is a uh, metal, it's, it's kind of an aluminum um, case, and it has a set of deck of cards that are divided in. One of the deck of cards pulls out from the end. One of the sets of cards pulls out from the other end. One of them pulls out from the section facing the camera, and then another one pulls out from the section away from the camera. So if you put this in the middle of a card table, you would have a set of, of cards facing all four members playing at the card table. Now, to me, that meant nothing because they're also very thin. So it's not an entire deck of cards. So I'm curious, there you go. Melanie Lippincott jumped on it. Now she's saying it's a specific, she's saying a bridge board, which technically it is, but it is saying it is a duplicate contract bridge board. So I don't know if duplicate contract bridge is different than traditional bridge. I don't know how to play either one of them, um, but I'd never seen anything like this. And I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. I need to pick that up. Well, then when I was looking at the back, I figured out it said, con you know, duplicate contact bridge. Uh, I think it has the name of the maker on it. Um, the M, M, -bo M Bobo graph. Okay. I think I just made that up. M yeah, it says M Bobo. Okay. M Bobo graph corporation of America. So that's what it's manufactured by. Um, it says it's the official duplicate contract bridge board. And when I purchased it, I saw the eight in the middle and didn't really think anything of it. I'm like, well, you know, maybe it's an inspector's mark or whatever. Well, it turns out these evidently were used for competitions, at least in this style. And so they were typically sold as a set of 24. And so this was number eight out of the set of 24. So I don't know if that's like an official competition level. So when I was finding some of you, you can find these in many cases, you can find more than one. Um, so I'm basically offering it for what I paid for it because it's, Still cool, it's still standalone. I don't know what you'd need 24 of, but yes, yeah, so Melanie said it's board number eight, but it's board number eight out of the entire set. This is the only one I have. So I still think it's pretty cool. I think the cards are actually pretty cool too. You know, so that's the design on the Cards are awesome. Yeah, so just the graphics on the cards, you know, straightforward cards, but the graphics are pretty cool. It's just kind of a neat little set and I'm just, I'm selling it for $14. So $14 for the individual contract duplicate bridge uh, which if you only need the one, you know, it's relatively lightweight Again, should cost a lot to ship it and who needs 24. So you get one, one of them for $14 and you can get that by giving me number 27, $14. You know what he's seven, saying seven, you can two. buy a case of 32 of them. 32. Okay. I didn't find any that big. I thought the largest I found was 24. So, okay. So third, so I, would, I and is that like a, club or is that for like national competitions why would you hit why would you need 32 she said yes the duplicate american contract bridge league we don't play with nice cards like that at all though <laughs> <laughs> there's a duplicate american country bridge league okay so That's very interesting i don't want to play bridge i'd love to learn. no i don't either so that is going to still be available she said the club owners do okay I guess, yeah, because then if they're hosting, you know, a big a big set, they need, you know, they need the numbers. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but that is okay. So the next one is an item I had picked up that probably I could save for closer to Halloween. But, you know, at this point, I'm just selling things, hopefully, as I get them. And I have a book called Haunted Houses by Larry Kettlecamp. It's just a paperback. Uh, it does have a copyright in it. Uh, copyright was from Weekly Reader Books. Copyright 1969 was the original copyright, but this is the ninth printing. So probably it was actually printed in like 70 or 71. Um, it is a collection of, it's written and illustrated by Larry Kettlecamp. It does have, um, drawings, black and white illustrations throughout it. It's just a series of stories and it looks like also poems because the first one was different. So you've got, and you've got a table of con contents. So some famous poltergeists, 
explaining ghosts and poltergeists and some famous ghosts. The Tower of London, the Haunted Rectory, the Manor House Ghost, the California Ghost. They all have their little stories built into the table of contents. It's just a simple uh, paperback book uh, from the 70s, and it is four bucks. So $4 for your haunted house book, $4 by giving me number 20. $4 number 20 for the haunted house book. That is a very cool book. It would be great if you got that and the Dracula print <laughs> together. I agree. That, those two match. I think that pen and ink would look great with that. And Lemmy Lemon, congratulations. You're getting number 20. Excellent. Thank you, Lemmy Lemon, for picking up another item. And I'll add that to your other purchase, which was the clown cakes. Great. So now we've got a haunted house going to a person <laughs> who collects clowns. I don't think there's any relation to that whatsoever. But uh, congratulations, Lemmy, for picking that up. All right, next item. This is another one. If you follow me on Instagram, I do try and show items uh, as I uh, am prepping for the sale, items that I definitely want to put into the sale. And this was one that I just picked up on my last trip. Uh, this came from Nebraska. And I find it interesting that it came from Nebraska because it is an Abington goose. Now, I only know that because they were selling an entire collection of Abington pottery. Most Abington pottery is signed or stamped in some way. This one actually is not, but I did a little bit of uh, Googling while I was there, and I did find that this shape is Abington. Uh, from what I can tell, Hager did not pick up the molds on this one. So this only exists in its uh, Abington days. Abington went out of business uh, before World War II. So this is probably dating from the 30s, possibly um, in the middle of uh, the world, by maybe early 40s. It is an adorable goose that is, you can see how far his neck is leaning down. You know, if you say, stand him upright, he's definitely like he's eating. He's got the gold painting on the beak and the eyes, and then his feathers are decorated with the gold as well. Uh, he has, he's in perfect condition, no chips, no cracks. I don't even think I saw any crazing on him. He's got the great, uh, Abington glaze. You can see where there's just a little, there's some dimensionality to the pink. So you've got some white that comes through and then they just overpainted the white with the gold to accent the leaves. I just thought he was adorable. He was hanging out in Nebraska. He needed to come home to Illinois, but now I'm going to send him to whoever wants him. So if you would like an Abington, a pottery, which is from Illinois, Abington Pottery Goose, you can have the Abington Goose for 15 bucks. $15 for the Abington Goose, and it is. It's in great condition, Nettie. Uh, and yes, Danny, he is. He is awesome, but he's not a turtle. Uh, so the Abington Goose is $15, and it is number 82. So 82, number $15, number 82 for the Abington Goose. The detail on him is absolutely amazing. I think he's a lovely little piece. I just fell in love with Abington pottery. I just think it's it's very high quality because uh, when Abington, they existed prior to the depression, but they were making like toilets and sinks and utilitarian pieces. They started doing art pottery during the depression because they people weren't building new construction. So they wanted to have something that they could branch into. So they went into decorative objects. So it tends to be a little bit heavier, like he is kind of heavy for his weight, like for his size, but it's because they were using the same clay they were using to make toilets. Um, they yeah. just started doing it in art pottery. So That's amazing. And Jay Goodwin is getting number 82. Congratulations, Jay Goodwin. Great little history behind Abington. Thank you so much, Jan, for picking that up. Yeah, I'm, I love him, and I'm glad he's going to go to a good home. All right, uh, next item. I do not have, uh, you know, again, always trying, trying to make Nate happy. Um, I do not have Nate's traditional Wedgwood for the sale, but I do have Wedgwood. And so what I have is Wedgwood porcelain, and it is the Kutani crane. How do I know that? because European porcelain is awesome, and it told me. So it is Wedgwood bone china made in England, and its, its pattern is the Kutani crane. That's what makes a lot of European porcelain, some American too, but it makes it easier to find because now I'm not searching for on eBay and Etsy for Wedgwood jar. I can actually search for Kutani crane, and I find exactly what's available. 
The Katani crane jars came in two shapes. Uh, this one, a little bit squattier with a flat top, and then the other one is the ginger jar, which is a rounded top with a rounded or rounded sides and then a rounded top. This is obviously the uh, straight sided jar. Um, this is one of those cases, you know, it put this in just about any room. If you want to put candy in it, small candy, but you can put candy in it, put your Q-tips or cotton swabs in if you want to, you know, decorate and dress up your bathroom, uh, put whatever you want into your office, paper clips. It's just a beautiful piece of porcelain with a gorgeous uh, uh, Asian motif with the crane decorated on all sides. So you've got the crane on both the front and the back. And then on both sides, you've got the floral. Um, I don't think those are, I don't know, those lotus flowers, maybe they kind of look like peonies. Um, so it's got the Asian motif and then also decorated on the lid. Perfect condition, no chips, no cracks. Should give you beautiful ping uh, because there's no chips or cracks. So beautiful piece of Kutani Crane uh, Wedgewood Porcelain, $18. $18 for the Katani Crane, $18 by giving me number 16. $18, 16 for the Katani Crane. And that is a gorgeous piece. If I had that, I think I would put sugar cubes in it. I think that would be a neat little jar by my coffee station. Yeah, actually, now you say that, I don't think it was designed for sugar and creamer, but it definitely could be used to. I never saw a creamer that matched it, but it definitely could be used for that. I love those little English sugar cubes. I think they're so darling. That is... And don't forget, folks, about the eBay auction. There's only six minutes left, and it's up to $20.50. So check out that pen and ink. All right. We've got another thing that uh, Katie can fangirl over. Copper. Katie, <laughs> Katie loves her copper. I do. Uh, so this is just a cool vintage piece. And I'm going to ask Katie's opinion of what she thinks of the age. It is a matchbox. So you've got the matchbox holder inside, uh, just paperboard, but it is decorated with a bow tie that has kind of a green enamel design into it. I don't know. I tried to research to see like when these were common, when this was made. I was guessing 40s, but what would you say, Katie? I was just going to say 40s because you've got that green color that is so 40s on the bow tie and the way the bow tie is shaped. Right. It's a little more pointed than it is rounded on the sides. Yeah, so I thought it was later than what you would see in the 20s or even the 30s. So, and I think, I don't know if that was really that common in the fifties. So arrow wise, uh, so Vinny's saying twenties to thirties. Um, so, you know, it's, it's hard. I, I have no idea. Um, and Angela said that that's what she was going to say, but I don't know if she was saying that to Vinny or saying that to us. Um, there's no markings on it. There's no maker's mark. The box that's inside is, there is a um, sleeve but I couldn't get it out. So I'm not sure if that's somehow glued in there. Obviously the little slide box comes out, but there's still, a, you can see there's a box in there. So I don't know if the whole box is supposed to come out or if that's permanent and this, you just like, you just put the matches in there and just re replace them. Um, so anyway, so that, so Sandy is saying the forties, Angela is saying the forties. Um, so, uh, we're, we're outnumbering Vinny, who was born like 10 years ago. So like, what, what would he know? So <laughs> just kidding, Vinny. Um, so I, I do th I do think it's the 40s. In the fact of the matter, it's just a really cool, it's just a match safe. It would look great on somebody's desk, look great in a copper collection, whether you use it for matches or not. Uh, when I had it, there were actually marbles in there. You know, you can use it to hold whatever you want, but it does have the striker on the side. And that's really the only place that's showing anywhere because it was used. It was a matchbox and it was used, the striker was used. So you've got the little copper matchbox and you can have that. Make sure I missed, didn't miss any comments. Okay, so Bookie Witch is saying that the whole thing is supposed to come out. So I'm not going to force it because I couldn't get it to move out. So you can do whatever you want. Uh, and yes, I am absolutely ageist, Jamie, because everyone's ageist to me too. So it is only 12 bucks. So $12 for the um, copper matchbox, 12 bucks. Give me number 24. 
twelve dollars, number twenty-four. That is a unique piece, Patrick, and I think the colors are great. And I love that, Vinny. D says you're an eighty-year-old trapped in a twenty-six-year-old body. <laughs> That's awesome. And man, that was a little popular piece there. I see for Sandy's lilacs picking up number twenty-four. Congratulations, Sandy. All right. Thank you so much, Sandy, for picking that up. Yeah, I just, I liked that a lot. And it was just one I don't typically carry that. Like I, like I said, I wasn't even 100% sure of the era, um, but I, I couldn't pass it up. It was yeah, just- that bow tie is just phenomenal. Yeah, I thought the bow, the bow, and I do actually, there was, it was like the, it was at an estate sale and it was like the collector actually collected bow ties or designs oh, because there's that that has the bow tie on it. There's another item, not in this sale, but I'll have later that it has, and there are two other items that have the bow tie design on them. Um, so let's see, next item. A minute this plus also, on the pen and ink. Yeah, uh, so this also came from Nebraska. Uh, this is, it is a company that I was not familiar with called Holiday Ranch. Let me start with the box. I do have the original vintage box that this all comes in. It's called Campfire Memories, Natural Aroma of an Evergreen Campfire. Now, if you know anything about me and watch any of my channel, you would know this is good enough to bring night terrors to me. Uh, so we have the Natural Aroma of an Evergreen Campfire, Campfire Memories, Campfire Horrors. Uh, smells are surer than sounds or sights to make your heartstrings crack, Kipling, or do something else. Uh, so the box is a little bit rough shape. You can see that the top of it, the, the corners have split, you know, but at least I still do have the box. And more importantly, what the campfire memories are is this little ceramic skillet that has the maker of Holiday Ranch on the back. And I'm assuming that's the manufacturer, although it could be the campground that this came from. I couldn't find, I found a bunch of these that said that, but no one really knew who manufactured them. You've got the little evergreen design in there and the Campfire Memories uh, slogan. And then you see there's like this little pit on the side of the skillet. And that's because it comes with your little Campfire Memory logs. So it's basically an early incense burner. So the idea would be you set, and there's instructions in here, you set it on fire, blow out the fire, and then you just set it in the skillet. And so then as it burns down, you basically just have a little incense holder. Um, so they're not like exceptionally rare, but they are rare when you have them with the logs, because clearly once you burn the logs down, you then had to find little cones or something else that you would have to uh, burn in here. So it's a whole set. You've got a bunch of logs, the original skillet, and then the original packaging with the, um, with the packing, you know, the, the padding, um, all available for there it is. I lost my tag. Sorry. All the way over $7. So $7 for the campfire memories set $7 by giving me number 37, $7, number 37 for the campfire incest in, no, we're not having incest. Incense burner. The that incense burner would be much bigger. Love that little piece. It's something you don't see every day. And Nate's internet is down. So yep. I am going to call this here. And I see the other Katie picking this up. Congratulations, Katie B. Thank you so much, the other Katie. I'll add that to your coaster set that you picked up. Uh, so I, the uh, auction just ended. I got the pop-up that uh, the winner ended up paying for the uh, pen and ink drawing. The winner ended up paying $22.50. Oh, and it went to the other Katie. <laughs> the, the other Katie gets the, is also picking up the uh, artwork. So congratulations, Katie, uh, for picking that piece up as well. Um, I may end up shipping that separately depending on what else you buy just because that I can ship flat and if I have to put other stuff with it, you know, I'm not sure what would happen with it. So you've already paid for the freight there, but I'll try and do something to make sure that your overall shipping is still low. But depending on what else you get, I'm not sure the best way to ship. So congratulations, Berkeley Girl, for picking that up. Congrats, and so 
so what just went live is now this um, this cake topper. And yes, Tiafane, I hate camping. I'm sorry I did not make that clear. <laughs> I hate camping. Um, <laughs> my daughter's boyfriend took her fishing for the first time. Like, oh my God, you've never, she, he asked her, like, oh, you've never been fishing? I'm like, who was gonna take her? I sure as hell wasn't. Um, so here is a uh, Wilton space, uh, space race little um, Apollo capsule. It has little doors in it and the doors open up and you actually have the little astronauts are in there. I did a little digging and thanks to Paula, I found the, uh, I found some examples where it was not still sealed in the packaging because I didn't want to open up the bag. If I could keep it as new old stock, I wanted to keep it as no new old stock, but I couldn't figure out how to show what all was in there. So I found another listing and I took, stole the photos, wrote stock photo on the bottom and just said, so that's what the capsule looks like. So it's got the two astronauts are, are wrapped up. Unfortunately, it looks like they're in body bags in mine, but you know, let's just assume this was not that mission. Uh, so they you know, lie down in the capsule itself. So that is what the capsule looks like. And that is what the astronauts look like. So if you look really, really closely and the plastic is old, so it's hard to see through it, but you can see the silver helmet of one of the astronauts is right there. So I do have the complete set. It is new old stock. And I know what this one sold for. This one was missing the little um, American flag icon uh, that are labeled that is, was, is missing off of this one. Um, and plus it's not in its original hang tag. So this is the original hang tag from Kitchen Capers in Chicago with a zip code. So it's after 1963, but most likely this is like 66. That was when GI Joe also put out a little Gemini Apollo capsule. Um, so around 1966, although this is this one has red and I don't know the significance of that. So that is up for auction now. And this will end during my live sale next week. So that is there. And I believe uh, Kate, uh, either Kate or Nate just put Katie. I said I try to fix the name. Katie Nate. and Nate. So Katie and Nate. Um, I, one of them just dropped the link for that. So that is also on my, um, that is now live and that will go uh, close next. And a quick uh, note here we have the other Katie has bought the pen and ink to send to Book Bewitched. So oh. thank you so much, Katie. That's a lovely gift. Okay. I will figure that out. And that, that should work out because the shipping to the West Coast should be the same for both of you. So that is great. I'm glad you said that. Um, so I will I will try and figure that out. Um, and I've already got a bid on the space capsule. So, okay. So we'll see how that one goes. All right. Halfway through the sale, going to do another mystery box. So you know the drill. You get a maxi pad, but you got to guess the number. So it's another $15 mystery box. This $15 mystery box, the number you have to guess falls between 70 and 80. So between 70 and 80 is the next mystery box. So go ahead, type in as many numbers as you can come up with between 70 and 80. Kate and Katie and Nate, I will get it right. Um, do you know the number? It cannot be bribed, but they will be able to watch. Okay, I already saw it hit. Uh, so we'll see who the first one was. I already see it too. I see multiple people wow. hit, and it looks like it's coming right out of the gate too. Yeah, so. it sure does. I'm going to wait for Nate to confirm. But man, that has only happened a handful of times. So that's pretty cool, folks. So I'm looking at seven, oh, eight, wow. nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, like 13 entries all with the same date, a timestamp. You know, so that's why we have to wait for nate to be the arbiter to say okay all these came in literally at the quote unquote the same time who does nate see and yes nate sees what i see mid-century wasted jamie is getting number 77 because it was number 77 congratulations jamie's picking up the second mystery box so yours will be a case again because i'm shipping to california um you'll still get a great value. I will just make sure you're getting some lighter weight items so that you don't end up overpaying for uh, shipping. So you'll get some good stuff. It'll just be lightweight stuff. Uh, so congratulations to Jamie. Thank you for picking that up. All right, the next item is, the one, is basically the largest item that I've got in this sale. 
And this was uh, also picked up for my last trip to Nebraska. And it was one of those cases that when I first saw it, I didn't have, literally did not have time. I was doing, I was visiting a um, thrift store on my way to a customer and I kept finding things. I just didn't have time. I literally was, I had to get to my customer. That's what pays my bills. So I just saw this. I didn't have time to research it. It does have a signature on it. And I'm like, you know what? It just seems like a really good quality item. I'm just going to pick it up and I'm going to take my chances. Well, I'm glad I did because I ended up finding it is a reverse painted tray. So it's got a sailboat on it. Not quite uh, Sam's ocean liners, but we definitely have the nautical motif. So we got uh, probably um, Vin Vinny is drooling right now. So we've got all the, all the people who love their nautical stuff. It is reverse painted on the glass by E. Holton. And it turns out there are, I found three of these listed on WorthPoint uh, that, has, that have sold and sold for pretty good money. Now, this one has had some water issues. The uh, cardboard liner is, a, is, you can kind of see it's got a little bit of water staining to it and little flex, flex on it. But the glass is what the art is painted onto. It's not painted onto the cardboard. It's actually reverse painted on the glass. So the, the art is in perfect condition. If you, it is in perfect condition. Uh, it's just, you know, I wasn't going to try and figure out how to replace it because the cardboard is behind the framing pieces. So it doesn't do any harm, but I want to disclose that because it is effectively damaged, even though you can't see it on the front. The wood is in pretty good shape, but it's, it's vintage. You know, it's it's definitely of its age. Um, it appeared to be from the 70s or 80s is what other people were saying it was from, but there's no marking on here to know. So it's just a cool reverse painted tray. I should have given you the size because it is a decent size. It is not including the handles. It is 17 inches by nine. If you do include the handles, it looks like it goes up to 18 and a half. Um, so just kind of a cute, like whether you actually use it as a drinks tray or I think this is the perfect size because it's only nine inches tall, you know, nine inches this way. This is a great backdrop for a display on a shelf because then you have this cool, you know, basically, you know, sailboat nautical motif in the background. And then you could have stuff sitting in front and you would see this sticking up or, you know, collect your stuff onto the tray, whatever you want to do. So I did mark the price down significantly uh, from what it was selling for because it does have the damage, uh, so, but it's a beautiful piece and it is $25. So $25 for the E. Holton reverse painted glass tray, 25 bucks by giving me number 59, $29, number 59 for the glass tray. And that is a beautiful piece. I think if you had a little bit of shrimping net or something, you could hang over the side of it and put it up in a display. It would yep. just be amazing. Absolutely. A cool piece. And I'm going to wait for Nate here, but I see a couple of people for the tray. And I see Chad, Shop Retro Days, getting number 59. Congratulations, Chad. Excellent. All right. Uh, next item, throwing another piece. Uh, I showed these actually on Katie's uh, sh show and tell last night. The These were two of the smaller uh, cake decorating pieces. We were debating whether these would have been considered uh, cake, uh, cupcake toppers or if these would have been actually for the cake and they just would have been scattered around it. So Katie said that she had had a tool themed cake when she was a kid and that they had the tools kind of similar to this size and they were just scattered around. Um, so these were not necessarily for cupcakes. We can use them for whatever you like. So this set has a, a square, a ruler, a hammer, a punch saw, a file, and a screwdriver. And they were they are all brown plastic with kind of like the aluminum colored uh, silver plastic on the blades. And then this one is a little bit more colorful with a shovel, an axe, a Pacific Northwest tree saw, uh, a spade, and also a square. So I just brought the two of them together. 
So you could have your heart's content of cake topper tools. They're new old stock. They both are still in their original hang tags. Uh, and they're probably, they're probably Wilton, but they do not say Wilton. They just say made in Hong Kong. And a lot of Wilton stuff was made in Hong Kong until 1995. So sets of uh, two sets of the tools, $8 for the two sets of tools. Hi, Debbie. $8 for the two sets of tools, eight bucks by giving me number 33. $8.33 for the cake topper tool sets. Those are neat. And I do want to clarify book and Katie, the other Katie, uh, let me know which item, Katie, you were paying for. I thought it was the uh, pen and ink, but I think I'm a little bit mixed up here. Maybe she was buying the incense holder. So just clarify for us in the chat. Okay. Get that squared away. And uh, if you are lagging, just keep refreshing. That's all you can do. Yeah. So Debbie and Kitchy Corner are mentioning. Um, so that's definitely, that's that's your clue. If you are seeing numbers come across before you hear me say the number, you just need to refresh your screen. So if you're in the app, just go out of the app and start it up again. And you may not think you're buffering, but that's your best example that you are. Um, and as long as you just refresh, if you're on your computer, just literally hit refresh uh, or close it and open it up again, whatever you want to do, but refresh will help you from losing your spot. Um, if you do that often enough, even people with, they feel they have slow internet, just stand just as much a chance as anybody else. So and please. you can also change your speed, make it a little faster. And sometimes that will kick you forward a bit in the YouTube settings. And live chat, yes, Peterson's right. Live chat is important, yes. not top chat. Yeah, because the difference, if you're new to this, the concept of live sales, top chat really will only give you um, some of the some of the chats. If you're seeing the numbers, it probably doesn't make as much of a difference, but go ahead and be in live because then once you do start bidding, you might still miss or understand, not know what's going on because you're not seeing all of the other bids. So live chat is definitely gonna keep you, keep you going. And uh, thank you for Melody helping to remind the thumbs up. And Kitchy Corner is asking what speed, Katie? What did you yeah, say? If you go to the playback speed in the settings, you'll see normal. If you put it in 1.25x in the little settings up in the top corner, you'll see three dots. You click on that and then you go to your speed and then click on that faster speed. Sometimes it will uh, kick you forward a bit. You can also downgrade the quality. So from 720p to lower and sometimes that does help. Oh, I've never done either one of those. So I just learned something. So thank you. Thank you, Katie, for clarifying that. All right, next item. Um, and, you know, this is also one of the benefits we all recognize. I don't sell everything. So you could send me an email now or, you know, bid now. You still would have one of these items because they didn't sell. <laughs> so that's why they're sitting there. All right, the next item, I actually have a duplicate. So I have two available. So this will help for those of you who feel that you're not getting a chance to squeeze in and grab items. This will now be the first two people that uh, we see will be the first to claim. Uh, these are similar to what I had picked up uh, once before. These are Brotherhood of Railway and Steamship Clerk membership cards. I think these are union cards. So it says the Brotherhood of Railway and Steamship Clerks for freight handlers, express, and station employees. These happen to be based in Cincinnati, Ohio, so maybe less steamship, more railway. Um, although I guess there was the river in Cincinnati. Uh, these are showing... Warning, to secure the death benefit, a member must have his dues paid currently in accordance to Section 5 of the Lodge Constitution. So, statute for government of lodges. So, I don't know if the lodge is something different than the union. So, I'm a little not 100% sure on that. Um, but what this is showing is the little dues stamps showing that these dues were paid. So this would then become if they died, but I don't know, maybe as a result of their job or just separately, their beneficiary would be able to prove that they had paid it because, you know, we didn't have computers. So I happen to have two of these. One of them is from 1953 and one of them is from 1956. So the first person I get will get the older of the two, um, but they are identical. It's just this, the stamps go into 50, 53 and 54. This one goes into 56 and 57. So, but they are, the body of them are the same. So they're all still three panels. And so the first two uh, that would get them. And now these I'm actually showing 
Um, I'm trying to, I need to check something really quick because I sent a note to Katie earlier and I'm not sure if she responded. Uh, yes, Patrick, I, I responding now. <laughs> <laughs> and are you saying yes? Yes, I'm saying okay. yes. Okay, <laughs> because that's why I have a note on these because I was gonna talk about these. So on Sunday, I'm gonna do a special um, live chat with Katie and we are going to discuss and create ephemera bowls, ephemera bowls. So Katie is the only person I know that has an ephemera bowl, but I thought the concept was pretty cool. So I went out and bought my own and I am now going to fill it. It's, I got a crystal bowl that has the uh, map of the world etched onto both sides of it. So I'm gonna have it in my travel room and I'm gonna, I haven't figured out what to put in it, but I wanna use Katie's expertise. She's gonna show off her ephemera bowl and we're gonna figure out what I've got to go into mine. So if you also wanna create an ephemera bowl, here's a pretty cool piece of ephemera that you know your, your friends are not gonna have. Uh, Perry Phipps, no, that's the secretary. Um, John Flynn's union cards. So from 1950s. So two of them available. First two people, they're $4 each. $4 for the union card. $4 each. So the first two people that give me 55. First two people that give the number 55 will each receive a union card. Uh, and to so you too can make an ephemera bowl or whatever you use your ephemera, wherever, however you utilize your ephemera. And ephemera bowls are so cool. I think it's definitely going to be a fun show. That was a popular item. And I'm going to wait for Nate here just to make sure we're all lined up because all those numbers came in at one time. Yeah. That was a, a fast item. Hello, Aaron. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Collection Vintage coming in from Canada. And Nate sees when I see number 55 goes to Melody's Mini Miscellaneous and Celeste in Texas. Congratulations. Congratulations to both. All right. I was looking to see. Yep, there it is. Katie sent me a picture of her ephemera bowl. I can only hope to live up to <laughs> the amazingness of Katie's ephemera bowl but she's got some pretty cool stuff in there. And that would be uh, cool. so we're just gonna have fun hanging out. It'll just be a little live chat and everyone can weigh in on what should or should not go into my ephemera bowl and see what else she's doing. So yeah. Jamie's saying she also likes the idea of an ephemera bowl, but she would need an ephemera steamer trunk. <laughs> that would be pretty cool too. So if you come across one of those, I wanna see that too. Uh, so thank you uh, Celeste and Melody for picking up the union cards. All right, next item, I pick these up and I'm going to, it's kind of a little pop quiz because it took us a while to figure out. I was with a friend when I found these and she and I could not figure out necessarily what they were. If we just flip the box over, it told us, but you know, that just makes too much sense. It is a tiny little mouse. Oh, look at him. With a very long tail. And the mouse is marked Napier silver. So there's a piece of, it's Napier silver and a silver plate. Napier doesn't do solid silver. Napier silver plate. And it has this very long tail. So I'm gonna try and show it to you up close and personal. So you can see what you think this might be used for. So what's your guess, Katie? Well, I was gonna say some sort of a tie pen or a- I will also throw out, this is unfair. There's eight of them in the set. So it is okay. a set. Now that there's more of them. I yes, I, I realized that when I saw somebody just guessed receipt holder, which is exactly what we thought they were as well, until we realized there was a set of eight. That's kind of like, eh, not sure that that would be what it was. And I now know it's not, but yeah, so, so that was a good, that's a good guess. So there is a set of eight of these. So do you use this in a table setting? Do you put some- It is, it is related to your table, table setting. I would guess name cards. That was my guess. Now I was struggling a little bit to figure out, well, then how do you do it? Do you like pierce it? You know, how would you do it? Well, it turns out, uh, so people are saying table, table name cards, place card holders, uh, receipt name holders, but we've got a winner. It's Mayberry Caboodles. It, they are cheese picks. 
And if I just bothered to flip the box over, <laughs> it said right on there, where does it say it? Number 229 mouse cheese picks. But this is the base and it was sitting in the lid. So we, we just didn't see it. So it's a set of eight of these little cheese picks. And these puppies are popular. Um, they sell fairly regularly on eBay and Etsy. And sometimes when I choose to put things in a live sale, it's because there are already a lot of them available for sale. So I try and be competitive in my price and make them just sell them here just so they're not sitting uh, waiting to sell, waiting to sell uh, for a really long time. So you have this set. Again, there are they are marked on the bottom. I can't probably get really can't see it. Uh, but they are Napier. Uh, the box itself, I don't, I, it, because it's stamped, it must be the original box, but there's no like insert or anything to keep them from rolling around. So there probably would have been some sort of insert just to, to show that, to stop those. Uh, yep. Mary, Mayberry loves Thank the cheese. You, I love me some cheese. <laughs> um, so you, you get the original box just missing its insert and you get that by trying to find the tag. You get the set of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you get a set of eight of them for 20 bucks. So less than $3 a piece, 20 bucks for the set of Napier, eight Napier cheese picks, 20 bucks by giving me number 58, $20, 58. <laughs> they look kind of funny just having little, they look like um, uh, bumper cars. <laughs> yeah, they do little bumper cars all sticking up. I tip them all down here. Down, down, down. Okay, there we go. Those are so, so adorable, and I love cheese. And those are just too cute. Looks like we had some takers. Yes, we did. And I see number 58 going to Angela. And I think Angela was trying to win those for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let me know um, who I need to bill. Okay, thanks, Angela. I appreciate that. Yes, Angela was uh, bidding on those for me and uh, bill me, Patrick. <laughs> I was saying, so is she buying them for you or you're paying them yourself? Yes, I'll, I'll uh, pay for them. And Angela was just trying to win them, I okay. think, for me. All right, so the mice are going to Katie. Yay, right. so everyone needs to come for a cheese party. <laughs> Absolutely. Minute this place, everything starts opening up. I will be in the car and I will drive to Florida just to have your a cheese party with your Napier mice. <laughs> um, mouse cheese bumper cars. The minute I saw those little things sticking up, all of a sudden I hadn't thought of bumper cars before. But then I could not think about it. Yeah, that's um, all you can see when you see their little tail. Yep. All right, so I also have another piece of Wedgwood. Again, not a tradition, not the Jasper Ware that Nate likes, but he tolerates other Wedgwood. Um, so this one, I had to do a little bit of digging because I couldn't figure out what it was. So again, let's play a little game. Um, it is a Wedgwood oven to table made in England piece, network number 45. You know, hopefully you can see on the size, it's only a couple inches tall and it's a couple inches across. What do you think this would be used for? It's too small to be some sort of a souffle. So I don't know what you would bake in there. Yeah, it's that was really what threw me. Little. That's what threw me was the table, like, the oven to table thing. Like, well, wait a minute, what is this? It's not a sake cup either. No, I. That's a stumper because it's the oven to table. That's just confusing. So we got Kim is guessing toothpicks. We got a couple of guesses. We got custard. We also have a sake. But Lemmy Lemon hit it out of the right out of the gate. It's an it's egg. An, it's an egg cup. Wow, I wouldn't so, have guessed that. I don't know. I mean, and this is like a legitimate question if anybody knows. It is the size of an egg cup. Like, so that didn't surprise me, but I still don't know why it would be oven to table. So would these have, like, is there a thing that you would boil, like do the soft boiled egg, put it in there, but then like put it in the oven to keep it warm? I, I'm not sure why this would need to be oven to table. So it is the it is like the high the hard paste porcelain, and maybe it's just because it's foods for food safe they have to put that on there. So I have that, no idea, but I would imagine that would look beautiful on a plate with your little toast and breakfast set. Yeah, and Barb is saying coddled eggs, but this one, unlike the other ones, it doesn't have the cover to it, 
So I, and it, I, this would barely hold one egg. Like if you cut it, if you um, broke open an egg, it would barely fit in there, but maybe you could coddle the egg, but I don't know if you have to have a cover for that. I'm only familiar with the ones that you cover to like poach and do that. Um, so anyway, it's, it's just, it's a standalone pea. It's got a peach theme to them. So, you know, anyone from Atlanta, you can have your peaches. Um, you've got the peach theme to it. It is probably, I don't know if it's necessarily all that old. I don't know all my Wedgwood marks. It's an absolutely perfect condition. It's a hard paste porcelain. It's gorgeous. It, you could use it for two, all of the other guesses. Like I would use this for toothpicks. Like I were, or put it in your bathroom, use it for your Q-tips. It could be used for anything. It just happens to say oven a table on the bottom. So it is a Wedgwood, whatever and you want it to be for six bucks. So $6 for your own piece of Wedgwood by giving me number 21. Six dollars, number twenty-one for your wedge wood cup. And Nate's saying he thinks that the oh, okay, is the name of the range, uh, just like we have the same mark here. That's interesting, and that would make sense because it is right across the top. So that, that would could... make sense. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that though. No, I would not. I assumed that it was something about like you know that it can go into the oven because sometimes you can't. And yes, I would want it for teeny souffles too. Absolutely. Okay. I agree with you. Okay. All right. Next item was also on my um, Instagram channel. This one is a goal of Katie and I to protect all uh, uh, elephants that have their trunks down. <laughs> So thumbs up for trunks. He's cheating up. He's cheating a little bit. He's got the end of it. She's got the end of it up. But we've got thumbs up for trunks down because everyone loves their trunks up elephants because they think they give them good luck. I'm here to argue that a trunk down elephant will give you better luck because it is going to be so thankful that you gave it a home because everyone else is ignoring it for its Viagra filled brethren. <laughs> so we have, I'm assuming Viagra wouldn't work here because we have a mother elephant with her what's a baby elephant called a calf cub no i don't know what a baby elephant is i don't either baby <laughs> i'm not sure calf? um it is not marked in any way i couldn't find a stamp or anything on it so i don't know who made this but look at the detail on this it's got the wrinkles in the ears it's an african elephant uh it's got the tusks Oh, the, it is a calf. It's a calf. Okay. It's got the babe, the calf wrapping his trunk around the mom's trunk. The tail's like kind of tucked to the side, so it's not protruding, so it's going to get broken off. Um, everything is just, there's no chips. There's no cracks. The eyes are just, you know, beautifully detailed, you know, beautifully done. So it's like looking like it's staring you right in the eye. Everything about this is just freaking adorable. Um, so it's again, just a high quality, uh, porcelain figurine, very well done. I just, unfortunately don't know who made it. So beautiful trunk down elephant, give it, give her a home with her baby, $18 by giving number 11, $18, number 11 for the trunk down mama elephant with baby calf. That is just darling. And yes, we need to give all elephants that have trunk downs a home. Because Thumbs up for Trump down. Behind, unfortunately. <laughs> Absolutely. Said, that little elephant is going to have a home for Sandy's lilacs. Is picking yay. Up the so yay. Thumbs up. Trunk down. All right. The next item, I meant to have my daughter, uh, the, the fluent German speaker, translate. And unfortunately, I forgot. Um, so I'm just offering this for what it is. It is a small porcelain stein with the with the metal cover with some level of German poetry or message on both sides. So there's probably a story here because it looks like a, a bum, a hobo, you know, hanging out in a flower field. That is, is that the maypole? Kind of looks like a tree. But is that what the maypoles represented when you've got all the shafts bound together? There's something in Roman times that that means something too, but I don't think there that's is. Cool. And then you've got, you know, somebody including what's down the bottom. No, I guess it's just the guy is just holding 
the barrel of beer and I don't know what the what the spider is doing up in the corner so that I he's got know. his own his own story down here too. So I don't know if anyone knows enough German. But it's just a cute little baby Stein, a little a little miniature Stein and it is at a miniature price. It's 6 bucks. So six dollars for a little German Stein with a German story written on it. Uh, six bucks by giving me number twenty six. Six dollars twenty six for the porcelain Stein. That is a great small little Stein, and you can make up your own story about what's going on with the uh, spider there. There you go. <laughs> and I see Mr. L. Page, Randy, picking up number twenty six. Excellent. Thank Randy, you very much, Randy. Randy. Thank you for picking that up. Um, I did a, uh, my Christmas in July uh, last month, you know, in July. Uh, but I still have all kinds of Christmas stuff. And I have an entire Christmas lot that I've got to figure out how to sell. Um, but this this I just thought was fun because we were dealing with the other things with cheese. So now we've got another thing with cheese. We have this pair of cheese... Um, what do you call this? The cheese, is it the slice? I don't, is it a slicer? What is it when it, it, it's got, like you pull this across the cheese and it, yep. I think it makes curls? Yes, thin, uh, small curls of cheese. So you got this this one with the Nutcracker King on here for making cheese curls. And then you've got the Mouse King uh, in this one, which is the, the cheese knife. Now, full disclosure, the cheese knife is a little loose in here. You can see that the mouse kind of like rocks a little bit. He can lock into place, but you might want to help him out a little bit. Maybe put a little adhesive or a little glue or something to hold that in place uh, if you plan on using him. But if not, he just would make a very cool Christmas themed decor uh, in with the Nutcracker theme. They're in pretty good condition in the sense that there's no cracks or anything, but they definitely have some age to them. And some of the paint is starting to wear away because I do believe these were used. So you think about the, the cheese sh shredder or whatever, you know, and where you're holding it, it's where it sticks out. That's where the paint was starting to come out. So it's just kind of cool The you know, so everyone's saying it's a, the slicer. So I guess this would be the slicer. And then this one, I'm pretty sure is just the knife. So, and then you've got the little pick at the end. And then you can use the end to stab your To stab the knife, to stab the block of cheese. So you get the two pieces, Nutcracker and the Mouse King. You get both of them for seven bucks. Oh, and they did, they do have a name on them. Um, Boston Warehouse, which I did not recognize that name. Uh, so Boston Warehouse is there in stainless. So $7 for the pair by giving me number 36, $7.36 for the pair of cheese utensils. And I believe Boston Warehouse is a restaurant, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Um, Boston Warehouse, they sell um, all kinds of fun, hmm. uh, yummy foods and so forth. Oh, excellent. Unless I'm Jeez, okay, perfect. All right. And I see Susan Way picking that up. Congratulations, Susan. Awesome. Thank you, Susan, for giving those a uh, home. All right. Uh, only two items left. So the next one is I had picked up a while back, and they've, they've been making an appearance um, in and out of different sales. I picked up an estate sale that did uh, they collected bears. And so I just had tons and tons and tons of bears. Bears are starting to show up in mystery boxes. Um, so this one is the pair of bears as salt and pepper shakers. They are stamped Japan on the bottom and still have their original corks, but no indication of who actually made them, but they're just the Japan quality, um, Japan made. They're in good condition, no chips, no cracks, a little bit of crazing in some of the paint. Um, but look at those. Just, first of all, it looks like you're about to beat him. So I, I don't know why he's like doing the side eye thing, but they look scared. So they need to be given a good home. They need to be made, need to be protected. Oh, so Jamie's saying her grandmother collected bears. Well, unless your grandmother lived in the Chicago suburbs, I hope these aren't hers. So this is a set of salt and pepper shakers of the bears. And you can get the pair of bears 
for eight bucks, eight dollars for the Japan made uh, ceramic bears, eight bucks by giving me number 34. Eight dollars 34 for the bears. Those bears are so cute. And again, great in the little collection of either salt and pepper shakers or bears. They fit many themes. Yeah, what's nice about this is their holes are set back far enough that if you just set these on a shelf, you wouldn't even know they were salt and pepper shakers. They just look at bears. Exactly. And I see Randy, Mr. L. Page, is picking up those bears number 34. Excellent. Thank you very much, Randy, for picking those up. All right, the last item that I have, uh, I, I will show the items that didn't sell, but uh, the last item I've got is the last mystery box. So for those of you who stuck it out through the end, you get your little special chance to win one more mystery box. Works the same way, gonna give you the range of numbers. You type, start typing in the numbers and see if you can guess. First person to guess the number will be the person that wins the mystery box. This one is still a $15 box, and this one has a number that falls between 60 and 70, between 60 and 70. So the last item is the last mystery box. Guess a number between 60 and 70 and bring home the final mystery box. Ooh, let's see. I see the numbers rolling in. Yeah. Don't see it. Oh, I see it. But again, I'm going to wait. I just saw one person with it. Now I got to see if that was the first person. All right. Got to get all the way to New Zealand, folks. <laughs> And Nate and I cannot be bribed. Right. Well, because there's going to be a bunch of people that'll know. <laughs> so everyone will tell us that we're not picking the first person. Okay. Let's wait for Nate. I think Nate's uh, having some internet troubles today, but he'll be with us very soon. I love your maxi pads. <laughs> yes, the mystery box is going to the catchy corner. Congratulations. There you go, because it's number 68. So 68 was the number, and 68 goes to the kitschy corner. So congratulations, kitschy corner, for picking up the last mystery box. So I will show the items behind me that didn't sell. So anyone that came in late, if you missed some, I've um, got one, two, three four items that didn't sell, so I, will, I can show those. Uh, but for those of you who stuck it out the whole time, I just wanna give you a little shout out to say thank you. Uh, I know there's a lot of places for you to spend your time. There are other sales going on, other activities. It's one of those things, I enjoy doing this. I try and have fun. I try to help people have fun. I, you know, knock wood. I haven't had anyone like go into like knock out, drag them out fights on anything because we're just here to have fun. So I'm glad that when, I'll, when you guys hang out with me, you're hopefully having fun too. I will give you a heads up. I'm hoping to organize this by my two year anniversary, which will be in October, um, but the clock is ticking. I do want to create some level of merch that will specifically be available to you if you would like to be recognized as an honorary huckster heckler. So I've already designed the logo. I've got the, I already have the logo. Uh, it's a variation of my own logo and it says honorary huckster heckler and I will try and figure out if we're going to do buttons or t-shirts or tote bags or something like that, you know, so you can wear it while you're watching the show, but uh, it's fun. I am glad you guys are hanging out and appreciate you giving me your time. Uh, and if you would like to see and stick around and watch, I'll show the items that didn't sell, but if not, thank you for putting your trust in trusty huckster. So I'll get the sign off to you guys, but I will show you the handful of things that did not sell. Uh, interestingly enough, both pieces of Wedgwood did not sell. So this one was the Katani crane, the little jar, the little covered jar. Uh, this is the Wedgwood Katani crane um, line. This was number 16, $18. So that is for the one piece of Wedgwood. And then the other piece of Wedgwood that didn't sell was the little egg cup. And that was $6, number 21. So the two pieces of Wedgwood are still available. Number 21 for $6 for the little one. And then the larger one is $18. Um, the cake toppers, the little um, uh, tool themed cake toppers did not sell. Those were $8 for number 33. So 33, eight bucks for the little tools. And then the last piece that did not sell was the piece that I didn't know what it was when I bought it, um, but it is the contract bridge set with the cards. And that was $14 for number 27. Okay, um, number 21 goes to Susan Way. Congratulations, Susan. All right. Lynn Fogel is getting number 16. Congratulations, Lynn. 
uh, right, excellent. And so then the contract bridge was number 27, that was $14. And then that and the cake toppers were the only two left, 33 for $8. Those oh, so, so Book Bewitch is saying they need tote bag with plastic pockets for resellers, stickers, and hand. I didn't know people were doing hand fans. Um, but that's interesting. Yeah, something to be able to display the stickers. That's a good idea. I personally like the tote bags. I've got a real nifty vintage tote bag. Um, because I'll, I take them when I go to the flea market and you know stuff like that. So I just like to... I like the bags. I don't tend to wear t-shirts. So... Uh, for me, I like the tote bags, but they tend to be a little bit more expensive. So it might be doing buttons, you know, it's for any, any of the people doing merch, it's not really a money maker for anybody. It's just for fun. And that's what we're all about here on this channel is having fun. So, but that's interesting. Yeah. We'll have to come up with something, maybe like a, uh, a log book or something. That would be fun. Like an autograph book you get when you go. To oh yeah. That'd be fun. And hopefully if things open up, we'll start doing a, uh, we can start doing meetups or things like that. Yeah, that would be um, awesome. I know that uh, Cindy from Mimi's Treasure Cottage, she was trying to, she's trying to set something up in Ohio. I don't know, did, was there one already in Texas or that one's still being, is that still being organized? I heard there was one of it in Texas. Yes, they're still doing a Texas one. I believe there's something coming up for the big Texas uh, thrift flea market thing that opens up. And I can't remember the name of it, but- Red Top? Yes, red top, um, uh, round top, round, round top. top. Yes. That's it. Yeah, everyone's getting together for round top. And oh, okay. So, and that's kind of open, I think, for everybody. But there's definitely some fun things coming up. Excellent. And I know that um, one of the items that was shipped for the Doxy fundraiser came from, I had mine talking about it. I can't remember who it was. Helen Booty, uh, New England thrifter. And she was saying that we should try and schedule something in the Northeast uh, at one of the Brimfields. And I think Brimfield runs two or three times throughout the year. So like there might be one as things open up. Um, that's, a little, that's a little far from me, but I've never been to Brimfield and I've always wanted to go. And it's probably more practical for me to get to Brimfield than it is for me to get to Round Top. Um, so, you know, it's one of those cases. And so, yeah, buttons people are talking about because then you can attach them to your shirt. You can attach them to your, um, your, um, tote okay. bags, several people voting also saying they dislike t-shirts. I thought I was the only one. So I'm very happy to hear that. Um, but yeah, I hadn't heard about the fans, the funeral fans. I hadn't even considered. I've never them. seen the fans. So that's new to me as well. Yeah. Like I, that was a totally, I just did a, um, Antiques Freaks does a podcast and I love their podcast. And I, they're like, they just do deep dives basically. So they're always different topics. And they just did one on funeral fans. Uh, well, they did two different types. One, the last one they did was folding fans, but they did one previously on advertising fans. And the history on them is really actually interesting. Um, that And that funeral fans were common because people went to funerals and they were really hot and people needed to fan themselves. So uh, yes, uh, we've got new, we've got new uh, icons. Uh, I think oh, dragon shirt. Yes. 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 Nate Halem that I'm wearing this one for you. I know you love my, it, they're actually not dragons or tigers. Does he have a dragon too? It looks like a dragon. Oh, yes, got a dragon too. So I have a, I have an all dragon shirt and I've got the tiger dragon shirt. So um, this one I like to wear because it's actually ridiculously large on me and I feel skinny again because all my other clothes are like skin tight. I feel like a Jimmy Dean sausage. So this one, I'm like, ha ha, I've got room to breathe. <laughs> so that is my, yes, dry, dragon and tigers fight, fighting. That is, this is my, this is, this is what I wear for my life sale. Um, but you yes. can create a dragon tiger shirt like that with the honorary huckster hecklers on it. That would be a lot of fun. I could do, I could do my little huckster guy and there could be like dragons. Like he could be like, can, he could be like a, th like a, in a three ring circus. They could all be dragons. That could be all kinds of fun stuff. So uh, anyway, so appreciate everyone hanging out. Uh, you know, obviously I do this for a little uh, extra income and I do appreciate the extra income, but I do do it to have fun. Uh, particularly during COVID, you know, theater, I love doing community theater and theater effectively is gone. Um, so this was a chance for me to like hang out, kind of, kind of perform and have fun doing something on screen. For those of you who follow my Instagram, you've got a little bit of a bonus treat, uh, the last couple of days. 
I posted my performance for the show that I was in a couple of weeks ago. So if, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, there were two weeks in a row where uh, Nate, AKA Vinny Nate, um, were wreaking havoc in my live sale because I pre-recorded it and started the rumor I was in a naked production of Annie Get Your Gun. But um, I did, I was actually in a performance. I was on stage during the show, so I couldn't run an actual sale. I posted some of my performances. They were from a rehearsal. But if you follow me on Instagram, uh, TH Mercantile, you will see me singing Kids from Bye Bye Birdie. And you'll also see me singing the solo from Matilda the Musical as Mr. Wormwood, which was the role I was supposed to do, uh, singing Telly. So I put them on Instagram because at this point it doesn't appear they're following copyright or like chasing people down. Where on YouTube they will. And I don't want to get my theater in trouble. So I've just put them on Instagram and I'm kind of like scoping it just to make sure I don't get busted. Uh, but I put the first one out. There were no issues or ramifications. So I just put another one. So if you want to see me sing, wouldn't recommend it. But if you want to see me sing. You have a good voice. You got to give yourself more credit. Those were great. Well, thank you. It was a, it was a lot of fun, even though I was surrounded by kids. Um, it was a lot of fun. And it was really just good to be on stage again and being performing again. But that is kind of what my YouTube channel has turned into. So I enjoy doing the sales. I, do, I enjoy doing the videos. Again, Sunday, I'll be doing a video, a live chat with Katie on creating ephemerables. Uh, and then Katie, what do you have coming up? So we got a lot of fun things coming up in the community. And this Saturday is going to be lots of fun. As you know, Pamela Blanchard is out of town at the world's longest yard sale. So instead of her sale, we are doing something fun on my channel. I'm hosting an ice cream social. And Patrick's going to be part of the ice cream social. A little uh, surprise there of one of the guests joining us. And we are going to play some Pictionary Live, eat our favorite ice cream, and just hang out. So if you're interested in the fun vintage hangout, that will be Saturday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. And then this coming week, I've got some fun things coming up on my channel as well. Another Bring Back the Brooch video. So you want to stay tuned for more of my brooch collection. And I do not have another deep dive scheduled until the 15th. I'm not sure if he's still here, but Sam from uh, Dining at Sea, Sam was in the chat oh. earlier. He will be my deep dive guest on Sunday the 15th. He will be covering his collection of maritime menus uh, dating back from the 20s uh, and on. And it's his, and this is no exaggeration, it is his Instagram channel single-handedly, which I discovered during COVID, single-handedly started my own collection of travel <laughs> menus because I didn't know such a thing existed. I didn't realize that, that was an area of collectability. So I now have like, I don't even know what it's like two foot by three foot framed set, a set of, of just different menus that I've picked up. So it's gonna be a great deep dive. Really looking forward to that. And then you also have uh, your, your show and tell is coming up. You've got another one next week, don't you? Yes, I do. And Catherine Young from Catherine Young Creative is going to be on and she's going to be sharing her collection of vintage scrapbooks. So I'm very excited about this because that's a unique collection as well. Uh, so I think those are lots of fun. And I can't wait for your next deep dive with Sam. Yes. Yeah, so uh, so next Wednesday will be with Catherine Young with on Katie's channel. And if I remember correctly, isn't Catherine Young, doesn't she do like graphic design or something so like a lot of i think her scrapbook stuff is all about the fonts and the graphics and you yeah. know it's, it's so i i bet it'll be a pretty impressive collection and then I'm sure. if you don't follow if you're on instagram and you don't follow dining at sea take a look at that have your have your napkin ready because you will see your drooling is an amazing set of uh, eye candy in a very very niche uh, collecting category, the, but that isn't necessarily that expensive. You know, you can pick up uh, vintage travel menus, not for that much money. Some of them do get expensive. So I'm sure that uh, Sam will be showing the range uh, of that. So those are coming up. So then thank you all for joining me. Is there anything tonight? Do you know, Katie? Uh, I believe Nancy, this overstuffed house is out of town at uh, the scout retreat. So she's not going to be on, but there is Another sale coming up with Martha at um, Vintage Conversation. So that's going to be starting at 10 o'clock. And then stay tuned to see if Nancy's doing anything at 11, but I don't think she is this week. Okay. Yeah. And I do, sometimes she's in the chat, but I, I don't, I don't think I heard from her. I didn't know if she was out of town though. Um, and then as a reminder, the, 
Last auction item is the cake topper for the 1960s space program. And it looks like it already has a bid. So there is some activity on it. Um, so take a look at that. That will end next uh, Thursday. So thanks everyone for hanging out. Um, thanks for giving me your time. Thanks for putting your trust in Trusty Exter. And you all have a good evening and a great weekend. And Katie and Nady. <laughs> yeah, thanks. And thanks, Kate and Nate. See, I just did it again. Thanks, Katie and Nate, for helping me out. It's been great. And uh, talk to you all again soon. Bye-bye. Bye, friends.